Interesting car of the day from all the auction sites. I am John Polnick. I'm your host, along with my partner Michael Deeb. Michael freezing. Deeb, he is freezing. We're both kind of freezing. freezing. Oh uh, yeah, look at that. The weather report on bid nerds. Who cares about how cold it is? Uh, Michael Deeb is in San Francisco. I'm in Las Vegas. We're in the Container Park in downtown Las Vegas. If you're ever in Las Vegas, come and say hello, Michael Deeb. How you guys doing there in the studio in San Fran? I got to say, man, it's kind of a bunk weekend, dude. My Niners got their <clears throat> butts kicked and then uh, it's freezing cold here. Literally a freeze warning for all of the Bay Area and Northern California. Uh, temperatures dropped in the 20s and 30s, which is super rare for us. It felt like Vegas, to be quite honest. But um, I will say this, John. Based on the success that you had last week, four wins to my one, um, There, I, what I noticed as I pick cars for the week, a lot of really nice cars have come to market. And I just kind of feel like with you know Barrett Jackson and the threat of interest rates rising again, that a lot of people are getting off good cars, cars that maybe they intended to keep. Um, and so we picked a lot of really special, if not maybe not necessarily the most affordable selection of cars, but there are, this Supra that we're going to look at today is a perfect example. We're going to cover some really cool cars this week, uh, even if a lot of them are going to bring, you know, sort of FU money that they're not cars that most of the rest of us can afford. Uh, I think it'll be fun to watch to see what happens. So I'm really excited. This is going to be a fun week, dude. Right on. All right, guys. Uh, if you're new to the show, if you just heard about Bid Nerds and you're like, what? what is this thing? People are talking about it. Let's go check it out. What Bid Nerds is, what we do on this show is we dig through all the auction sites like P-Car Market, Bring a Trailer, Cars and Bids and more. Uh, once we find a car that we think is the most interesting car of the day, we'll go ahead and bring it to you. We'll talk about it. We'll have a conversation about that car. And then the interesting thing is we'll make a prediction on that car's yeah. auction, we'll go. It's price is right right here. We will Ooh. we will tell you what we think that car is going to sell for or not. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes there's fails to sell that type of thing. Look, we'll make the prediction and then we'll reconcile that prediction at the end of the show. We go into the future and we actually marry those two things together. So we don't just make predictions out there. We're not like the weatherman that you just never hear. You know, <laughs> he never has to answer for his being wrong or a politician or something like that. No, we go ahead and we're like. <laughs> Here it is. Here's what we think it is. And then later in the episode, uh, we show you how wrong we were. All right. Don't you wish a politician would do that, that they would oh. vote on a bill. They'd make an argument for something. <laughs> and then like they would immediately go in the future and go, Oh yeah, here's the results of that stupid spending package we just did or whatever. Um, <laughs> and show just how wrong they were all the dang time. Anyways. Okay. So let's get to the cars today. Uh, and we just want to give a shout out to our good friends at God and Porsche of Las Vegas. They are a Porsche classic dealer right here in the city. They are the only Porsche classic uh, dealer in Las Vegas and one of what, 13 in America? Is yeah, that right, Michael? That's right. Yeah. That is right. They're the very first in North America and uh, and and then Porsche will cap it at that. There there may be one or two more classic partners, but uh, that's it. Of the 190 almost 200 Porsche stores in the US, um, there probably will never be more than say 15 or 20 Porsche classic partners. Um, so Godin is the first. They're the experts and they know it better than anybody. Yep. All right. So check them out if you're looking for a classic Porsche. Okay. Let's get to the most interesting car of the day. Woo! This is Look uh, at this. This is one that uh, definitely qualifies. What do we got here? Michael Deep, tell us all about it. All right, JP. So we saw, I think, the, the Acura NSX and this Mark IV generation Toyota Supra with a turbo and a manual were really the first sort of Neo classic or, you know, young timer or modern classics, however you want to say it. Um, the cars that, that were cool, JP, when, when we were kids or young adults, um, they were the first Japanese cars to break a hundred thousand dollars in the secondary market. And this Mark IV Supra Turbo is spectacular on Bring a Trailer, showing just 11,000 miles on a no reserve auction lot. The big news here, JP, is twofold. Um, one, super, super low miles. Two, 
it was originally an automatic transmission car, but somebody did a transmission swap and put a Getrag six-speed manual transmission in there with a special clutch uh, and a limited slip differential. So in other words, they did this whole job at once with a performance place in Southern California. It'll be interesting to see what this car brings because the manuals bring a massive premium over the automatics. But this car wasn't an original um, uh, manual, but it is one now. So it, it's all there. The other thing that's really cool about this, JP, is that it's this uh, this white, this super white paint. Um, you know, when, when you picture this generation Supra, I always picture a black one for whatever reason. I always think that uh, the majority of these cars uh, were black and then a bunch of them were red and occasionally yellow. But I feel like, and correct me if I'm wrong, sort of like 996's JP, that white winds up being a really rare color on this generation of the Toyota. Um, really neat car, super low miles. I can tell you this, JP, based on past results, if this were an 11,000 mile original manual car, we're looking at a $250,000 example because the low miles, the white paint, and the manual gearbox. This car also has the sport roof, JP. It's not a coupe. It's a pop-off roof. Um, but with the replacement gearbox, it's still going to bring a massive premium over where it sits right now. Uh, but I wonder you know, what that delta is going to be. What's the hang-up for being a, a transmission swap versus an original gearbox car? Um, at 11,000 miles, I don't envision anybody actually driving this car except to maybe the occasional car show to show it off. Um, but somebody's going to be speculating on the future value of this car. And that's where it gets kind of murky because this car isn't with its original equipment, but it's still in the correct specification. So we'll see. But JP, I'll pass it back to you. Um, you know, I've never really driven these cars. I've always just been a huge fan of them. Uh, I love how the, 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 the way the dash is laid out and the center console, everything is canted inwards towards the driver. So it feels like the driver is the pilot and the passenger is in a sidecar. Um, I always thought that was really cool because I would never be the passenger in a car. But I wonder what you felt about that, JP. Do you like that style? And 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 have you driven a, a super turbo in anger? I know you've got a lot of experience because you used to work for so many dealers uh, when you were coming up. Um, any real time behind the wheel of the, the turbo with a manual? Well, I mean, to answer your first question, yes, I do like that interior. I, I like... a all the styling cues on this car because it's a direct ripoff of a 300 ZX. I mean, this car, <laughs> it, you know, the, the Nissan made Toyota's job really easy. I mean, they basically designed <laughs> everything for them. This is a, this is a freaking copy, man. Um, and I don't know why these are worth so much more than the 300 ZXs uh, in the turbo configuration. I know there are far fewer of these. Look, if they remade fast and the furious, uh -huh. These are worth so much money now. You know, in the movie, remember when they're in the super yeah. and the Ferrari pulls up and the guy's like, Ferrari, you can't afford it. Would they have, would, would they just invert that now? Would they just got to have, <laughs> have would, would the kids be in the 348 and they pull, or maybe it was a 355, I can't remember. You know, Toyota, can't afford it, pal. I mean, yeah. just, I don't get it. I <laughs> the don't, irony. I'm, that, I is, have, that is a very funny take because, <laughs> yeah, a, a 348 Spider. And a super turbo with a sport roof taken off. This is this car is worth more than twice as much money as that 348. That's yeah, funny. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. Look, have I driven one of these? Uh, the answer is sort of. I've driven one. I've driven multiple of these in anger, but they were like super modded cars. Uh, yeah. One of my one of the first films I one of the early films I I, I did when I started out my career was a. Uh, film called faster. We made a DVD and it, it came out right about the same time as all of the fast and the fear or the first fast and the furious movie. And it was yeah. all about the real street racing. It, you know, we went up yeah. and down the West coast. And so we knew a lot of people, we had a lot of local clubs up in Seattle that wanted to be a part of it. So we would go out and we would drive their supers and stuff like that. And Nissans and all, it was all JDM cars, very few yeah. European cars, but yeah, some of, some of the, some of the mods on these things, they were just absolute monsters. They were terrifying street destroyers. So yeah, the Supra turbo is just an absolutely fantastic car. Uh, as much as I give it a hard time for basically ripping off the 300 ZX, um, it really is, they, they took it that next step. This is the better car for sure. But yeah. that said, um, is it worth that much money? I mean, geez, Louise, Ooh. what these sometimes bring. The thing I don't get about this car, Michael Deeb, uh -huh. is that someone 
at some point, does it, did it say, so this is a, this is a transmission swap. This is not an original right. manual. Like you pointed right. out. Uh, when did they do that swap? How long ago? Oh, like, boy. Does it, does it mention anything about that? Because there was a time where the, there was a long time where these cars weren't really worth that much. They, they always kind of brought a premium, but the cost of doing a swap, I got to figure is going to be 10, 20,000 bucks, something like that. Um, I have maybe your a lot less. Okay. Give me the, what, yeah. what's, what's the story in February of 2020, they took out the factory four speed and, and replaced wow. it with the get drag six speed manual transmission. Now here's the interesting thing, John. I don't know if Getrag is the original six speed that went into these cars originally, or if it was sourced from somebody else. Like did somebody buy an aftermarket transmission or do they replace it with a Toyota, which is the OEM transmission that Toyota would have used. It's not written clearly. And uh, I don't know enough about these cars to tell you whether it is or it isn't. Getrag, um, if, if, if Toyota used a different gearbox, then the Getrag is likely an upgrade because Getrag makes racing gearboxes and, and a lot of the transmissions that are in Porsches and Ferraris and things like that. So these are these are good gearboxes. Um, well, yeah, but that anyway. said, it's it, the the reason why I ask when, right? Is that is, uh, you know in 2020 these cars were already starting yep. to come up depending on when, right? So I, I'm sure yeah. someone saw okay investment value here or whatever. But it's not the original transmission. The car already has low miles. It's like, does the, it's such a, at that kind of miles, you said it when you were talking about the car, is this thing going to be driven? And the answer is probably not, right? So what difference does the transmission make if it's just going to sit somewhere? It's so weird to me that the value of this car is going to be that much higher uh, given that no one's ever going to drive it in is, I, yeah, I just, well, let me give you the let me give you the okay. crude quantification, right? If this is a if this is an automatic with eleven thousand miles in pristine condition, it's a hundred and twenty, hundred twenty five thousand dollar car. Mm-hmm. If it costs you twenty or twenty five thousand dollars to do the transmission swap, and you get two hundred grand for the car, you just made fifty thousand yeah, dollars. So that's yeah. that's why they did it. But it's just so weird that anyone would buy it based on that. Uh, you know, you would think that yeah. <laughs> the premium would be based on the fact that it you know, is an original car. I mean, just if it's, if it's about mods, then usually when you're doing modded cars, it's about the driving experience. So look, we profiled a, what was it? A 77, three liter, nine 11, a mid-year Carrera, yeah. uh, yeah. last week. And that car had a three liter with a twin plug and it had 300 horsepower, you know, right. which is a lot for that era of nine 11. And, you know, so, so many things not stock and that car brought nearly a hundred thousand dollars, which is probably, yeah. I would call it 20 or 30 more than a regular one would, uh, with that engine. And, but that car clearly is going to be driven and the value yeah. that it brings the, or rather the price that it brings the value and the price that it brings on the market is based on the performance that someone will utilize likely, right? There's yeah. not much collector value on that. When you start talking about collector cars it's all about the originality of the car yet on this car you could go ahead and do a massive performance (laughs) upgrade on something that will not be utilized that it will be an underutilized utility in economics terms right so it's just it's it's amazing to me that this car will probably bring a premium not that unlike what a real one with a, with a manual transmission or will it? I mean, I guess that's a good segue into what will this car bring? What do you think? Good question. So JP, our car closes. Actually, you know what? But I'm sorry to cut you off. I do want to put this out there because we got people watching. You just mentioned, and I don't know the answer to the question. Does it, did these come with get drag transmissions? I'm yeah. sure everyone watching this video knows, that, you know, cause we don't. So please yeah. let us know in the comments below what transmission belongs in this car. Yeah. All right. I'm yeah. sorry. Go ahead and let's get to the prediction now. Okay. So, uh, JP, these cars were $47,000 brand new. Just, uh, just so you know, uh, back in 1994, basically 29 years ago. So, John, uh, with basically about a day to go, our car is sitting at currently $106,500 on uh, 14 bids. Again, uh, the value on this car, if it were an original manual car, I would say it would be in that two hundred thirty dollars to $250,000 range. I think this car is going to bring right around two hundred. dollars uh, prior to the show, I was thinking like 199, 195, and then doing the show, I'm thinking, oh, maybe 206, 210. I'm just going to go 200 and just straddle the line because I really can't make up my mind 
which side it's going to fall. But I'm just going to say $200,000. Um, I think somebody will concede just a little bit for this car. Um, it is on the right platform being on BAT. It's a no reserve auction, which is going to have everybody glued to it. Um, I'll be curious to see where it goes. White's really rare. That's all my disclosures. I'll give it to you, JP. What did you say an you. automatic one would go for? If About 120 were, with this uh, condition and this yeah. color, yeah, and this miles, uh, considerably over a hundred thousand dollars. I'd say 120 to 125. Yeah, I, look, I just there's I don't think there's any way that this thing breaks 200. I just I, I just it's not okay. original. I mean, and, and right. it's just a weird place. If this were like a 50,000 mile car, and that transmission was something that would be utilized, something that someone would use, I think it would bring a really big premium for whatever a 50,000 mile version would bring. Yeah. But given this one, it's, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to go under you by a pretty good mark, but not, I mean, look, I'm going to say a buck 80. Um, yeah. and I'll be surprised. I, I really think it's probably going to be more like a buck 50 or something like that. But, um, because it should bring a big, huge premium over the automatic for sure, given that it's had the work done to it and it's a great mod, but it's a mod. It's not, it's did, not original. Did, so. I, did I mention it's at $106,000 already? Yeah, I mean, yeah. with you know, with what, how how much to go, or how much day, time do we have? A day, a day. Close, all right. You know, a lot happens tomorrow. in a day. So we're so you're thinking that it's going to double in a day. We're going to find out in. You don't have to wait a day. That's the great thing about this show. You're going to find out in sixty seconds. Hey guys, I got to tell you about our friends God and Porsche of Las Vegas and God and Classic. If you're looking for a new Porsche or a classic, you got to call our friend Steve at God and this guy. 1989 linen gray metallic G50 cab. Is that going to be for sale? It is going to be for sale. Uh, the car only has 65,000 miles. On Save it. yourself the hassle of screwing around with all the auctions like we always talk about and just talk to Steve. He'll find you the classic Porsche you're looking for. Gotten Porsche of Las Vegas. And here we are in the future. It's the future time. It's future. We have a flux capacitor right here in the studio in downtown Las Vegas. We used it, and now we are ahead of time. Um, are you keeping up, guys? Are you? Did you put your bids down below? Because now's the time to find out what's up with this Toyota Supra. Because, like, I don't know. We got some crazy numbers here. I got I got flex capacitored on on this one, JP. Well, this this one. Oh, well, you did pretty good this week, but uh, I got had yeah. to, you know I had to get one right. So tell us what happened. Not on this one. The Supra did well. It sold our no reserve eleven thousand mile nineteen ninety four Supra with the six speed manual swap. I really thought because of the white color and the eleven thousand miles, this car was going to score. I guess the seller's happy because it sold at his price. Um, or was it no reserve? No reserve. So he let it go. I wonder what he's thinking about this. But JP, here's the deal. I went big on this car. I said 200 grand. Your argument was there has to be a price to pay for not being original equipment. And even though you bid $180,000, I could tell your, your heart was with a lower number. And John, you should have followed your heart because our car sold for just $150,000 on 31 bids on Bring a Trailer. The interesting thing to note, JP, is that this was a no reserve auction. And it and, and when I go back, obviously I thought big things were coming for this car because of the color uh, and the miles. But your argument before we went to break was that that you know it can't be a number that's too comparable to an original equipment manual car. So it's gotta be there's gotta be a bigger delta. And so you took the under at 180, but I, I feel like you were thinking lower. Do you remember how low you thought? in your, in your mind, you thought this car would go for, because I still think $150,000 is a dear price to pay for what looks like a really nice car. But clearly, according to this number, this car is never going to bring the big collector dollars. And I sort of thought it might, some of the Ferraris are getting away with it, with the engine, with the transmission swap. So tell us what you were really thinking on this super, because you were closer, but I feel like inside you were, you saw this coming, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, you and I play off one another on this. I get the benefit of always going uh, second. Um, so I can kind of see where you're at, and I, it's fun to go back and forth with that. But yeah, I, if I had to uh, if I had to bet first, um, yeah. I may have lost this because the delta was big, right, between where yeah. you were at um, and what the actual price was. But I was thinking, I wasn't even sure I was going to bring 100. I, I was thinking maybe 110. Really? 
maybe 120. Jeez. I just don't understand the, the value ground. of a car that's had a swap. I mean, I don't even understand the, you know, $150,000 for a Supra period just seems absolutely <laughs> ridiculous to me. I mean, it's not right. that they're not a great car, but come on, 150 grand for a car that was, you know, 30,000 bucks forever. Um, yeah. And, you know, it doesn't say Ferrari on it. Yeah, Ferrari can no. get away with doing these swaps because it's an F car. Um, but I just, I don't know. I do see that, I mean, I do get that in a lot of ways, this car is more rare than most of its Ferrari, uh, you know, cars for, of its, of the same era. Right. I mean, a 2000, what year is this? This is a, a 94. 94. Yeah. So yeah, this is so 348, 340, yeah. 348 territory. And, the, and you know, you made the argument too, right before we went to break that like these cars are bringing more than uh, the 348s. And you were talking about the fast and the furious thing, yeah. like how funny it would be, you know, this is expensive because it's a Ferrari. It's like, well, yeah, I have a Supra that's worth twice as much, you idiot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, and 348s have come up quite a bit, but not, Yeah. I mean, $150,000 348 would have to be an all original 10,000 mile with the original five speed. If it, if it yeah. had a swap, do you think it would bring 150? I don't think so. Even if it had low miles, I don't think it would bring it. Three, yeah, I don't think 348s came with a automatic gearbox. So they only came... You yeah, wouldn't have a, a gearbox good point, swap. Good point. There's no F1. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, point. but but what's interesting is that yeah, like it would take it would take a coupe, a 348 coupe, not mm -hmm. a Targa, which this is a Targa, mm -hmm. uh, certainly not a Spider, and it would have to have exactly 11,000 miles to bring north of 150 grand to to show this car its financial taillights. You know what I mean? Did they so, did they have a challenge version of the 348? I think they did, didn't they? Or they something? did, but those cars were never street legal. So, mm. well, so you know, made, and the car in the movie cars. was a was a 355, if I remember right. correctly. So, right. Spider. 355s, yeah. on the other hand, uh, <laughs> an F1 yeah. is definitely not worth 150 grand uh, yeah. in in today's market, even with things going crazy. But with a but uh, no, those it, have a six speed so what yeah it would have to have an eleven thousand mile six speed spider to bring 150 grand because spiders suffer like porsches yeah ferrari yeah. spiders suffer to their coupe counterparts the gts's do pretty well though right with the target they do the target top they do. yeah they do too. it's well it's which uh, let me ask you let me ask you and the audience this would you rather have a 355 gts with a manual six speed or would you rather have this turbo Toyota? What do yeah, you guys it, think? I mean, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I mean, this car is probably faster, right? I mean, uh, gotta... No, 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 no. The 355 makes nearly 400 horsepower. It's like 375, yeah. 380. This car makes 320. So okay. the 355 is a quicker car. And that gated manual in the 355. Yeah. The, the 355 had a flat plane crank, JP, and mm. revved to 8,000 RPM. This thing's forced induction. You'd have to put an exhaust on it just to hear hear it running yeah. now don't get me wrong this is a great comfortable fast reliable predictable handling it's a fantastic car in every way but that, that is ferrari not a ferrari is, <laughs> it, uh, is one of the <laughs> yeah. all-time great ferraris and the and the, the gts you know the way you yeah. like cars it you get the benefit of the coupe the, you get the benefit of a spider, but the the reliability and the all weather protection of a coupe, but having the roof that comes on and off, and yeah. and that 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 car with I'm pretty sure that's the first Ferrari to use the flat plane crank. So it just revs. It sounds like a race car when you're when you're at you know on the cam at high RPM. It, there's no comparison. I think I think nine out of ten guys would take the Ferrari, and it would just be that one weirdo that loves Japanese cars that would choose this over the Ferrari. Well, while Deep tries to get his camera back, uh, oh, we're going to hey. wrap this episode up. Which car would you guys rather have, a Toyota or a Ferrari? Ferrari, pal, you can't afford it. Well, apparently, I, I most a lot of us can't afford a Toyota anymore either. This is just nuts. What do you think is going on in the market, you guys? Uh, we want to shout out to our good friends at God and Porsche of Las Vegas and our sister channel, The Rami Show. So check out The Rami Show if you guys haven't checked it out already on YouTube. And uh, we will see you guys Later. tomorrow. Bye. Woohoo! No!